Welcome to another Orca type video. In this video, we'll be analyzing how to use the typewriters in order to perform various word processing editing capabilities. The main things that we're going to learn how to do is to bold text, underline text, and also italicizing text using standard typewriters. The first section of the video will help you identify what type of machine that you have. The second part of the video will analyze the various techniques used for each type of machine in order to bold, underline, and italicizing text. We'll be exploring the techniques from using traditional typewriters such as the one you see in front of me to more sophisticated and complicated electronic typewriters such as the one over here. This video is divided into several parts. You do not have to watch the video from start to finish. We'll provide for you chapter markers in order to be able to jump from one topic to another. Let's begin by learning how to identify what kind of typewriter we are dealing with. This typewriter over here does not require any electricity to work. It is all me operated mechanically. Therefore, this is known as a manual typewriter. Inside this manual typewriter, you will see that it consists of a bunch of bars. These bars contain letters and alphabets and special symbols that are printed at the end, which when you hit a key, will strike the paper and print a letter or a symbol. Therefore, this is known as a manual type bar typewriter. Typewriters that require electrical power either through the wall or through batteries are known as electric typewriters. These are typewriters that usually have an electric motor that is present inside the machine that when it's operating would use pulleys and other mechanical operations in order to be able to assist with the typing of printed documents on this machine. As you can see, without any electrical power, this typewriter cannot operate. This typewriter is still a type bar typewriter, however, as you can see that it still uses bars which contains letters that are printed at the end of the bars in order to be able to type something on a piece of paper. Not all typewriters use type bars in order to be able to print text on a piece of paper. Some typewriters use elements such as these things over here that look like small little golf balls. These electric golf ball typewriters usually contain letters, numbers and symbols that are printed all over the surface of the type element. The type elements simply have to turn and tilt in order to be able to print something on a piece of paper. The most common type of typewriter that uses this style of typing is known as an IBM Selectric typewriter, but you may find these sort of mechanisms being used by other companies such as Remington or even Brother. Most of the time when you find typewriters that uses type elements like these ones over here, they tend to be electric typewriters. Some on the other hand, such as the Selectric composers, are actually electronic typewriters. The most common type of electronic typewriters you will find uses typing elements that look something like this. These are known as daisy wheels because they look like daisy petals. When you take a look at each of these petals, you will see that there's a bunch of character symbols that are printed at the very tip of the petals. The typewriter simply turns the wheel, stops it and then hammer each of these petals onto the piece of paper in order to be able to type something. Most of this turning and hammering is done through the use of electronic signals. So these are known as electronic daisy wheel typewriters. Another kind of electronic typewriter you may encounter is a typewriter that looks something like this. This is known as a electronic thermal typewriter. It is electronic because each of these keys are actually sending electrical signals to a bunch of computer circuits and systems in order to be able to translate to printing action on this particular typewriter. It is a thermal typewriter because this printing mechanism is actually using heat in order to be able to melt ink onto the piece of paper. On a manual type bar typewriter, underlining is performed with the underscore key. The underscore key on this particular machine is located at the number 6 key. To begin underlining, first position your printing point to the start of where you would like to begin underlining. In this case, if I would like to underline the words very important, I'll position the printing point at the letter V. Next, I press the shift lock key over here. And then I'll proceed to press the underscore key. I continue striking the underscore key until the words very important are completely underlined. As you can see, we have successfully underlined very important in this particular sentence. On most electric typewriters, you will find that some keys have what is known as repeat action. 
In other words, if you press and hold down a particular key, it will repeatedly type on the piece of paper, similar to how a computer keyboard will work. The underscore key in this particular in typewriter actually does have repeat action. If I press and hold down the underscore key, it will constantly and repeatedly enter the underscore symbol on the piece of paper. You can use this action to quickly underline particular words in a sentence. If let's say I would like to underline the words extremely crucial in this particular sentence, I can perform the same actions as I did with the manual typewriter, only that the repeat action will make it much easier to operate. The electric golf ball typewriter also has similar repeat action keys on the underscore key. Therefore, to underline a bunch of text, you can simply perform the same actions as you would on an electric type bar typewriter. Reposition your typing point to where you would like to start the underlining. In this case, I would like to underline the word terms and conditions. Shift locks and just simply hold down the underscore key until you see that the entire two words are underlined. You can now see that the text has been successfully underlined. Electronic daisy wheel typewriters usually have some form of computer automation built into their systems, which will allow you to be able to automate certain features such as underlining words. To activate some of these functions, it works very similarly to a modern word processor. For example, you will press Ctrl S to save a file in a word processor. On this particular machine, the combination to press in order to be able to activate the automatic underline function is the code key and the zero key, like this. Once this function is activated, when I type anything, it will automatically underline the information for me. If you would like to deactivate the function of underlining, you simply press the code key and the zero key again in order to be able to type normally. Each electronic daisy wheel typewriters usually have different sort of key combinations to activate the underlying function. On this brother typewriter, the underlying function is activated by pressing the alternate and the hyphen key. The interesting thing about this particular machine is that it also contains two different form of underlining functions. The first underlining function works exactly like a word processor. Everything including spaces will be underlined like this. Pressing the alternate and hyphen key one more time causes the arrow on the LCD display to point upwards. This activates the second underlying function which is known as underlining of words only. What this means is that if I type the following text again, only the words are underlined whereas the spaces will remain blank. To underline text on an electronic thermal typewriter, the procedure is identical to using a daisy wheel typewriter. First, find the key combination that activates the underline function. In my case, this is the mode key and the number 8 key. Your typewriter may have a different combination to activate this function. You can see that on the LCD display, the underline is activated right here according to this LCD display. Now, when I type, The text is underlined as shown on the LCD display. I can switch off the function by simply repressing the key combination. And now, when I type, there is no more underlying effect on the LCD display. To print, press the carriage return key. And you can see that only the words that I activated the underlying function is underlined while the rest of the words are printed normally. 
to bold text on a manual type bar typewriter, there are two methods that you can use. The first method is to simply just retype the letter that you would like to bold. For example, if I would like to bold the word remember, I simply reposition my typewriter such that the printing point is at the start of the word and I just have to retype the word a few times. As you can see, there is more ink deposited on the word which will result in a slightly bolder and darker print. Another way that you can bold is to use some sort of offsetting in order to cause the text to appear bolded. This is the common technique used on an electronic typewriter, but we can actually apply the same technique on a standard manual typewriter. You can notice that if I use the backspace key, if I press it all the way down, the typewriter would backspace exactly one space. However, if you press the backspace key gently, you can see that I can just cause the carriage to nudge slightly towards the right, like this. This allows me to have some offset when it comes to typing the text again. So I simply reposition my printing point to the beginning of the word. For example, I would like to bold the word sign. Now gently press the backspace key like so to offset it a little bit, retype the letter S, release the backspace key and repeat for the rest. As you can see, you can also successfully bold text in this method as well. The remember and sign are bolded as compared to the rest of the text on this document. Some electric typewriters like this Smith Corona Coronomatic 2500 has a backspace key that is powered. In other words, a gentle press of the backspace key will cause the typewriter to move its carriage back by one space. There is no in-between position, so you cannot use it to offset the carriage to produce bold text like what you would do with a manual type bar typewriter. Fortunately, for some of these machines, they contain certain systems that allows you to be able to use two different kinds of ribbons in order to be able to produce a bold effect. Swift Corona Coronomatic typewriters allows for this system to be used. Right now, I have typed the text in ordinary film ribbon, which produce very nice, clean and sharp impressions. In order to, let's say, bold the text remember, I simply just eject out the film cartridge system out first. I will now load in this nylon fabric ribbon, which will produce text that is a little bit less sharp, but will produce a much bolder effect. Position my carriage back to the start of the letter for the word remember. And now retype the word. So you can see that the text for the word remember is slightly bolded as compared to the rest of the text. On some electric golf ball typewriters such as the Selectric Tools and Trees, they do include this particular lever over here which is known as the half backspace lever. Notice when I pull it all the way, you can see that the carrier is actually pulled back by half a space. The interesting thing about this particular lever over here is that you can choose to pull the lever all the way or you can choose to just simply nudge the carrier a little bit by pulling the lever part way only. Using this technique, you can use the offset method in order to bold certain words. So let's say I would like to bold the word Friday on this particular text. I reposition my carrier such that it's going to print on the word fr Friday. Simply pull the backspace lever slightly such that it just offsets the printing point a little bit. And then type. Repeat for the rest of the letters. Once I'm complete, I can release the half backspace lever and you can see that the word Friday is bolded. Bolding text on an electronic daisy wheel typewriter is relatively easy. Simply find the key combination to activate the bold function. In this particular machine's case, it is simply the key combination code and B. Now, when I type, the text will appear in bold.
If you want to deactivate the boolean, simply press the key combination again. Not all electronic Daisy Wu typewriters are capable of printing in bold text. For example, this Smith Corona XL1500 series does not have any bold functions built in. To figure out which key combinations to press to activate a particular function, the usual guide is to simply look at the keyboard that is presented to you and see what sort of additional words are printed on each of these keys. Usually, the colored words will represent that you need to press a special colored function key and then you need to press the particular key in order to activate the functions. Sometimes these functions are printed on the top of the keyboard over here instead. Different electronic typewriters use different key combinations to be able to activate the bow function. For example, on this machine, to activate the bow function, we need to press and hold on the alternate key, then press the equal and addition key. Bolding on an electronic thermal typewriter is identical to using an electronic daisy wheel typewriter. Find the key combination that activates the both function. In my case, it is the mode and the number 9 key. Your typewriter may have a different key combination to use. Now, when I type the letters, you can see that the LCD display shows that the text is now bolded. When I switch off the bolding function by typing the same key combination again, you can now see that if I type in normal text, the text will be printed normally. Pressing the return key would print out the text. So you can see that one half of the words are bolded and the other half prints normally. In order to be able to italicize with a typewriter, your typewriter must be able to switch fonts between a standard font and an italic font. On a standard manual type bar typewriter such as this one over here, it is not possible to change the font at all because the fonts and letters are fixed into these type bars. Therefore, it is not possible for you to be able to italicize your text on a standard type bar typewriter unless you have two typewriters with different fonts. Just like a manual type bar typewriter, the electric type bar typewriter cannot produce any italicized text because you cannot switch the fonts easily with a type bar machine. The electric type, the electric type ball typewriter usually contains removable type balls that you can swap fonts out. Therefore, if you would like to type italicized version of your text, you should contain one ball that is the ordinary font and the second one which contains the italicized version of the font. For example, Korea and Korea Italics. If that's not possible, you can simply use a cursive or a light italic font instead. So right now, I'm typing a simple message over here with a Diplomat 72 font. Now I would like to italicize a particular word. I simply remove this particular type ball out of the machine. I swap it out with a script font, which is a sort of cursive font to simulate an italicized font since I do not have a diplomat italicized version of this particular font. I now type in the word. Once I'm done typing the word, I can simply swap out the original font back in like this and continue typing. You can see that the cursive font creates a sort of italicized version of the original text. On the electronic daisy wheel typewriters, the daisy wheel can also be swapped out just like a Selectric golf ball typewriter. Therefore, this allows you to be able to italicize text so long as you either have a script font or a font that is an italicized version of the font that you're using, for example, Korea Italics.
First, type out the normal text. When you're ready to proceed with the italicization, simply open up the covers to remove the daisy wheels. Depending on your make and model, the procedures will be slightly different. So on this Smith Corona, I simply remove this particular cartridge over here. Remove the wheel. Swap out for another daisy wheel, in this case it's a script font. Place it in, clamp it into place, place the ink cartridge back in again, and close the lid and let the, and let the typewriter do its thing. Once the typewriter has successfully accepted the new font, I can now type in italicized versions. You can also italicize text using the electronic thermal typewriter. Most of these typewriters include additional fonts either in the form of electronic cartridges or they are inbuilt into the ROM chips inside this particular machine. In order to be able to activate this function, first find the key combination that allows you to change fonts. In my case, it is the mode key plus the hyphen key. Here, you can see that the ordinary Korea 10 font is now selected. Pressing the star symbol will confirm this selection. If I type normally, you could see that the text is in the normal printing form. Now, I would like to change to the italicized font. Again, perform the same key combination to activate the font switcher. Press the return key to go through the different fonts. Once you find the font that says italic 12, you can select it by pressing the star symbol. Now, when I type, the font would be italicized. You cannot see this on the LCD display, but when I print it onto the machine by pressing the return key, you can see that the font is now italicized. Thank you for watching this video. I do hope that this video has been useful for you in terms of learning how to bold, underline, and italicize using the various typewriter machines that you have available to your use. If you have any questions, do leave them in the comments below and I'll try my best to answer them. With that being said, thanks for watching this video and I hope to see you again soon.